Okay, okay, now we start. Uh -huh. So um, today my talk is on uh, building serverless AI workflows with WebAssembly and Rust. Uh, my name is Miley Fu, and I'm with this open source project called the Wasm Edge. So we are majorly using Wasm on the server side because uh, usually when people uh, think of WebAssembly, they would think uh, it's used in the browser, but um, we are majorly uh, trying to uh, use uh, to have uh, WebAssembly uh, being adopted on the server side. So um, that's the web, uh, the GitHub link of us, and we are uh, donated to CNCF, that uh, Cloud, Native Com Cloud Native Computing Foundation on the Linux Foundation. So let's start. So that's several things we are going to talk about today. So the first is the challenges, and the second is Wasm and Rust, and why Rust. And uh, we will have some demos if we got enough time. So uh, right now, uh, what's the challenges for developers when they are building AI workflows? Um, so we can uh, we know that uh, large language models uh, can be not um, as smart as we might think. Uh, they uh, sometimes uh, when you ask some uh, questions that has something to do with some domain expertise, it cannot answer you correctly. And also it's too big to uh, easily customize. And uh, also sometimes uh, when you talk with it for certain scenarios, it can, um, for example, if the, uh, someone wants to use it to uh, serve to uh, this, uh, to their uh, customers as uh, some companionship uh, like roles, they can sound really machine-like and it can be easily distinguished. For example, one, uh, one thing we are doing is to help some um, developers to build, uh, uh, actually it's uh, like for a church, like a LLM bot, so that the bot can answer some uh, Bible-related uh, questions, but it can sound really machine-like when people talk to it. So, uh, and also for work workflows that build on top of ChatGPT or Claude or uh, Google Spark, it can be uh, too expensive to fine-tune. Or also when the API got Called, it can also cost a lot. And uh, we have heard cases that the monthly bills can be uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's really expensive. And uh, we would have concerns on data leaks and uh, some legal co uh, concerns about whether the uh, answers that generated, being the code or um, text, is it uh, license or is it illegal to use? And uh, also there are censorship and, and bias that every one of us are, might have uh, MC on this. And um, also uh, there are more challenges uh, I've listed out. So um, it's usually built, so the current LLM workflows are currently built on quite complex and uh, uh, the cloud native infra design uh, are for fully fledged services and very he heavy weight and uh, uh, all these overheads can slowing down the development and uh, uh, running AI workflow on different hardwares would require building separate Docker images for different pla platforms, like for the underlying GPUs, they, they, it can be NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. So we need to tailor to their specific drivers and tools. So that's also a major hurdle for devs and operation teams. And uh, development and orchestration can be really complex. So managing uh, the deployment and orchestration of those large language models um, using like 
uh, document Kubernetes can get really complex. And when dealing with cross-platform compatibility, resource allocation can be really uh, difficult and complex. And uh, so uh, it's said uh, this was some tweets happened uh, about one year ago, and that's uh, Greg Brockman is the uh, president of OpenAI, and he's also the co-founder of OpenAI. Even he thinks that uh, Python can be too complex, and the machine learning engineering with Python uh, can be your development bottleneck. And also, Chris Alban is the uh, uh, founder of uh, Wikipedia, and he says uh, he is asking about how to correctly install Python. So. Um, the, the other guy comment, commented that it can, uh, it's really ridiculous that the best, genera uh, best mind of uh, our generation are thinking about how to install Python. That's, um, uh, that's a saying that uh, the best mind of our generation used to be um, like Google um, making people click on ads or like right now more um, like it can resonate more if you think about um, like uh, short video companies trying to get you to scroll and uh, to spend time more. So yeah, so that's, uh, we're saying that um, Python can be really hard to use. So um, this is a paper that uh, came out not, uh, not long ago. So that's uh, also a comparison with another paper that's because uh, this uh, title, there's plenty of room at the top, uh, can remind us of something uh, like decades ago. That is, there, there are plenty of room at the bottom. That was, uh, I think, um, 60 years ago, uh, when, uh, when we think that uh, the, un the hardware are getting, um, like, iterated very fast. So uh, like at um, that time when people are compl complaining about Microsoft system being too slow and the, their software being too hard to use, um, Bill Gates would not be worried about that. And he would think that just because the hardware is getting uh, faster in so such a short time, it, uh, it doesn't matter that uh, software is it's slow, the performance is not that important. As long as it's easy for developers to use, it's, um, the performance is not a concern. But uh, fast forward to today, um, just uh, because um, more slow is not uh, working as effective as before, like uh, you can see from um, Apple has uh, produced a M series of chips and it was only like uh, maybe 20 to 30 percentage of uh, performance improvement, we would be so amazed. So that's uh, how the hardware is uh, improving today. So um, right now we, what we need, would need to do is to improve the performance of software. So um, you can see from uh, that's a screenshot of a uh, graph taken from the paper. So that's uh, how these uh, languages are performing. So uh, you can see Python can be really uh, slow and uh, compared with uh, C, it's uh, like 50 times slower. So uh, there's another tweet from uh, Chris Landner. So he's the inventor of uh, uh, Swift language and LLVM. He, uh, he also thinks that um, actually in uh, a recent interview of him with uh, Lex Friedman, that he said uh, Python is great for model training but sucks for model inference and uh, a new uh, first principle software stack is needed for fast evolving uh, heterogeneous hardware like different CPUs, GPUs, TPUs, MPUs, etc. So his answer to the uh, challenge would be uh, his new 
uh, programming language called uh, module um, that he would call it uh, a superset of Python. So because he thinks Python is too slow to use. So um, but uh, uh, instead our answer, so as a word manager, our answer to that is instead of um, module, we, we think Wasm and Rust is the answer to that challenge. So it's, uh, Wasm has emerged as a very compelling, lightweight, portable, and secure uh, uh, type of uh, language for that. And also, uh, you can see that uh, um, Elon would also think, uh, like in SpaceX and um, Grok, they are using Rust to a very large extent. So, but one thing with uh, uh, with languages with high performance like C and Rust is that it's not portable, so it can be also a problem. So that's why we propose Wasm plus Rust. So, uh, for if if you are familiar with WebAssembly, you would have heard about this uh, two sayings from the co-founder of Docker. So Solomon Hikes, he said that if Wasm and uh, Wasi existed in 2008, uh, we wouldn't have needed Docker. And uh, uh, WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. But later on, he said uh, Wasm wouldn't replace Docker. Instead, it will uh, go hand in hand, like in a lot of use cases. Um, when Linux containers can be too heavy weight, uh, Wasm can come and run side by side with the, uh, Linux containers like Docker. Um, so this is uh, Tyler McMillan is the CTO of Fastly. So uh, he said that um, a virtual machine is like emulating a computer and a container is emulating a uh, operating system and so like Docker and the uh, WebAssembly is more like on the level of uh, process and uh, on the right side that's the key finding of a CNCF survey uh, in 2022 so that it's in plural the key findings but actually there's only one that is containers are the new normal and uh, WebAssembly is the future so um, we think uh, WebAssembly is the next wave of cloud computing. And uh, uh, what the Magic team has uh, collaborated with the CNCF to um, have this uh, new landscape that's inserted in the CNCF landscape called uh, Wasm. So it has different sections. You can check it out on the official website of CNCF. Uh, so also, uh, we went, attended and gave talks at uh, KubeCon uh, in Paris uh, in March, I think. Yeah. So um, uh, Chris also s said uh, that uh, he think what I'm combined with CNCF project will become the best runtime for AI or LLMs. And during the week of KubeCon, uh, according to this EMA research survey. Uh, not sorry, but uh, he, he must have did some uh, count. So uh, the mostly mentioned keyword during KubeCon EU was Wasm. And um, so how WebAssembly started, it, um, the idea is to uh, have uh, Wasm to, uh, so, so the developers just have to need to write code once and it can run anywhere. So it started from the browser. Uh, so in 2010, it was a side project by Alan Zakai. Uh, he was working in Mozilla and um, uh, he was thinking that uh, he wanted to do a lot of different things inside browser like playing games or VR or a lot of things, but um, JavaScript can be really slow. So he, he uh, made uh, WebAssembly to run high performance um, programs. Uh, and later in 2015, uh, WebAssembly beca uh, became uh, 
Oh, that's uh, uh, W3C group has been funded and uh, to uh, 2019, uh, it was uh, recognized as uh, one of the fourth standard for the web. That is after um, C uh, HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. So WebAssembly has become the fourth language for the web. And um, what it also was released in 2019 uh, is the, uh, it stands for WebAssembly System Interface. So that's how it's uh, moving towards the uh, server side. So it um, can allow the uh, WASM to talk to uh, system and um, uh, server side WebAssembly is uh, gaining more adoption. And um, uh, so it's, uh, you can imagine it more like um, WASM being Java bytecode and uh, uh, WASM runtime being JVM. So that's uh, so what Java was trying to achieve many years ago. Uh, WASM uh, would uh, think we are uh, aiming for it. And um, so, uh, yeah, I've already talked a little bit about uh, WASI. So um, the most important thing is that it is uh, portability. That is to ensure WASM apps can behave consistently across different OSs and uh, devices. And um, uh, it would enable WASM not to just uh, uh, operate uh, like in inside browser, but also uh, on edge computing and the other environment. And uh, uh, continuously WebAssembly evolves and uh, uh, aim to um, come outside of browser and uh, towards the server side. So why wasn't for AI? Oh, so wasn't for, uh, for cloud native, we have uh, made some comparisons. So it's one third, uh, actually it's uh, one a hundredth size of uh, Docker uh, or like Linux um, container and it's 1,000 times uh, faster than a Linux container. And uh, of course, uh, all the advantage we have been talking about, it does has trade-off that would be um, not like a Linux container is not a general operating system. Uh, developers ne would need to learn uh, about WebAssembly SDKs to uh, compile their applications into WebAssembly so that it can be running a WASM runtime. So that means a higher skills uh, for developers and uh, comp uh, Linux container can uh, be like uh, seamless, like uh, developers just need to move everything uh, from one container into another, but so with WebAssembly is that they need to learn WebAssembly SDK and port their app or rewrite their app inside, into WebAssembly and in order to take advantage of the benefit we talked about. So why wasn't for AI? Um, we would think WASM would be best uh, for AI or LLM inference. Um, so it uh, would have a zero Python uh, dependency, which can be a big hectic for a lot of um, LLM app developers. And it would be uh, once compiled into WASM, it's, it can run inside the WASM runtime as a containerized file and it's much, much faster than um, Python and it's secure and it's almost native speed and uh, uh, like uh, we want to stress about portability. Um, it's uh, can just um, as long as uh, it's uh, compiled into WASM, you can not worry about any kind of uh, environment changes. Like uh, when you uh, find your uh, LLM app uh, running on your Mac, it can just work as well 
in any G on any GPU or CPUs. So um, it you can think it as an abstraction layer from AI apps over the underlying drivers and libraries and GPUs. So um, it will support a wide uh, selection of AI or LLM models. So uh, we are. Um, uh, so when you uh, when you uh, run this one single shell script, you can um, you can uh, have a sense about how um, portable this is and uh, see the advantages. So I will uh, show you. Um, so it's if you also have a Mac or so right now on Windows it's um, it works uh, in WSL only, but so we are supporting it soon, like without WSL on Windows. So like with any app, be it an M series of chips or Intel chips, you can just run this single command, and uh, it it will. Uh, Download a uh, WASM runtime, and uh, you can uh, uh, also uh, uh, GDUF format LLM on, onto your Mac, and then you can with uh, you can start talk to an LLM, an open source LLM on your device uh, right away. So uh, so instead of running this single line of command, I will. And just to break it down because it contains several commands. So I'll show you. So that's the several command that shell um, uh, includes. So that would be that. That's what I talked about. So download was an edge runtime, and uh, then download an API server app. So it. And so this is would be a uh, open AI compatible API and uh, API server and um, uh, you, then you can run the third command and you can talk with uh, the uh, locally self-hosted LLM right away and also it can uh, on localhost 8080 you can pr pr uh, you can talk to it uh, on, on, lo on that um, port and then uh, you can also offer it as a service because it's fully uh, open AI API compatible. Yeah, I will do a little demo. So the first two I already downloaded, so I will just run the third command to show you. So that's um. That's included in the shell script, so by default it would uh, download for you the newest. Uh, it's not newest uh, Gemma to be. Uh, it's uh, the, the former version because um, Google have already recently released uh, Gemma 1.1, uh, and it's also supported. You only need to change the uh, model name, and it can run. So. Okay, failed. Hmm. Oh, that's because. Okay. Yeah. Start. Oh, I guess I'll terminate. Hmm. Somehow it doesn't work. That's strange. I guess I'll do the shell instead. So it's installing the Wadi and GGML plugin. I guess while we wait, we I'll go forward with the slides. Then. 
and see if it works. Okay, yeah, I guess if the first step uh, succeed, uh, we can just uh, see SCP, the uh, wasm file, the API server wasm file to another device it, and it can run without any recompile. So um, yeah, I guess the first uh, demo has to work. So, um, for the longest time, we have uh, DevOps that combines the role of developers and the ops. But uh, the, uh, nowadays, we have so many new hardwares and different devices and drivers. And all that stuff has um, coming along for AI applications. Uh, so I think it would be a good time to separate the dev and ops. and. Uh, the way it works is that WebAssembly is a virtual machine format. You can uh, think of it uh, last, like I just mentioned, it's a, like a Java bytecode. So it provides an abstraction over the real hardware. And uh, for devs, um, you just need to write to the WebAssembly interface. So in our case, you just write to the WebAssembly awesome Edge SDK interface and it tell, uh, and it would, t would tell the SDK, so the runtime would say um, to load a model and do the inference and the developer only need to write application uh, like this. So uh, the application once it's uh, compiled into Wasm, uh, the developer's job is done and he or she can ship the application anywhere. Um, so later the runtime would take over the rest. So the it, it would be the ops people's job to um, figure out which version of the runtime they should install like for Mac or for uh, other uh, device. So uh, like whether you need to uh, on Ubuntu or like uh, run a different kind of CUDA version or like uh, for, so for ops guys, so they can, they, do not need to worry about the, um, the code. So once they uh, see a WASM file, they would be able to just run that WASM app without any modification. And because uh, it has a standard API that's defined in the WASM Edge SDK. So once, uh, uh, if the instruction says uh, load a model and send some text to model for inference, it, um, would, uh, the bytecode would automatically run uh, those code and uh, would translate those code into that instruction. So it would allow developers to write truly portable um, apps and uh, it can be man also seamlessly managed by Kubernetes and uh, other uh, like uh, also Docker and Palman and uh, things like that. So. Um, that's, uh, uh, that's what, what we have been talking about, that, uh, the underlying heterogeneous hurdles would be overcome with what the end, uh, which is WebAssembly, uh, system interface neural network, uh, that would, that's also a standard to, um, uh, abstract uh, GPU access at the Bison uh, code level to um, uh, it's adapted to run uh, very large models uh, and also the uh, traditional models like TensorFlow and PyTorch. So, uh, so for ops, they need only need to run the Wasm binary app and the bonus would be the Wasm runtime itself is a very secure sandbox and can be managed by uh, OpenShift and Docker. So um, Wasm functions as a serverless AI workflow. Uh, we would uh, have different approaches towards that. So you can use uh, 
tools like LangChain or Llama Index. And also this is a similar framework called Flows.network and it's built with uh, Rust and Watson. So um, we will also do another demo. Uh, let me see whether the first one it has worked. Uh, okay, it's just, uh, okay, I guess live, live demos are not reliable. So uh, let me do the second demo. Um, to write a serverless, uh, so we are gonna uh, use this um, flows to our network to oh, okay. So to write a serverless function AI function. So um, this is. Um, so we click on create a flow. This, this would be a would be a Discord bot that powered with any open source uh, large language model that you prefer. You, you, as long as you download it from Hugging Face, it can work. So uh, you need to uh, firstly uh, fork this repo and that which I already forked into my own GitHub account and the platform will help you to do the compilation. So it's a function written in Rust and uh, the platform will, would ha will help you to compile it into WebAssembly. Uh, so that's this, uh, this is the uh, what's on, like the repo containing the what's on, uh, the Rust function I mentioned. So um, for these values, you need to get a this. So in order to connect it to Discord, you would need to go to the Discord portal to get a token. Discord developer portal to get a token, it would be, um, and it's OSS. And uh, you copy this Discord talk. You can add a system prompt. Okay, I think I'm a little bit running out of time. Uh, so the value can be anything like you are a helpful assistant. And then add a LOM endpoint. So this step would require my first demo to work, but it didn't. So, so this would be the uh, like localhost eighty eighty, and uh, I can use uh, like ngrok to make it a public dom domain address, and I enter here, and I click on build. 
it would um, uh, automatically help me to uh, compile the uh, Rust function into Watson, and uh, the later the bot would uh, you can just talk to the bot with um, uh, Discord. So that would be like. Uh, yeah, that would, would be like here. Um, so, but I guess because my first demo was not working, uh, uh, somehow, yeah, I guess I wouldn't be having the um, self hosted running. Oh, and but uh, I guess I will choose another. Let, let, let us try Tiny Llama. Um, this one is Tiny Llama. So run the API server. This one should be working. Yeah. Okay, Tiny Llama works. So, because I already downloaded the Tiny Llama into my uh, laptop, so uh, and also the Wasm runtime, of course. So, with that one single command, I can talk to Tiny Llama and uh, see if you want to have to ask anything. Maybe something about Seattle. Um, what is uh, the best food? of Seattle. So the first uh, answer would be, okay. <laughs> yeah, the first would, uh, answer would be slower because the uh, runtime would need time, a little bit time to load in the model. So, but um, as we mentioned, the entire uh, inference app is uh, with the dependency is less than 30 uh, 30 megabytes, which is much uh, smaller than the traditional Python ones. Um, yeah, I guess oh, our time is almost up. Like, uh, I guess I will wrap up because uh, I, um, I should have a, another demo, but uh, let me present a view. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, some. Uh, use cases for the like the, the serverless platform I showed. So this is a GitHub review bot. Uh, you can connect any uh, like fine-tuned or rag added um, uh, LLM like uh, that you self-host. And another side you can connect um, other sites like Discord or Slack or uh, email or GitHub. So, and this is another one. So uh, we use some Rust learning material to uh, create in, in a vectorized uh, text to make them into embeddings. And um, uh, the way it works, it's um, every time uh, when, the, when uh, you are asking the large language model something, it would go to, into the vector database to search and uh, fetch those um, relevant material and uh, put uh, with, together with your question and ask the large language model. So uh, it so this kind of rag uh, empowered um, uh, serverless bot would be really accurate. And the other approach is uh, it's actually a decentralized. Um, uh, open source knowledge base LLM plus Rock server. So this is also an open source project that's built on top of WordMatch. And uh, uh, it's pretty new. So if you check it out, the documentation might not be so complete. And uh, you can just uh, install this uh, server node by uh, running one single command and start this command uh, and start this um, server. So it will automatically uh, provide you with a public domain that you can 
uh, used to, uh, uh, so it's also uh, OpenAI compatible. And um, yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't have time to show you uh, exactly how it works, but uh, you can check it out uh, with, at this uh, on GitHub. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, we are running out of time. So uh, what I mean is it's not only supporting large language models, but also this, uh, like, like I mentioned, uh, TensorFlow and uh, FMPEG. So this AI frameworks, data processing frameworks and model libraries. So uh, we would welcome a lot of open source contributions. You can uh, click on the tag of LFX mentorship. Uh, every year we would uh, have a lot of mentees uh, and we are supported by LFX uh, with a payment. Uh, and uh, it will also be looking good on the uh, mentees uh, resume. And um, also there's an ongoing incentivizing project that is to award uh, new water magic contributors with um, LFX exam voucher or course voucher. Uh, as long as you become, uh, you have never contributed to water magic before and you became a contributor, uh, you can win this voucher. So that's, uh, the deadline would be August, uh, a, uh, the end of August, so you need to have your contribution merged before that. Yeah, and that would be our uh, GitHub repo, and uh, the uh, some resources I used uh, would be here. And uh, I guess uh, the last slide would be, uh, th this is the handle of my um, GitHub account and, uh, link, uh, and the Twitter account. And uh, so we are doing a lot of promotion uh, with Rust as well. So uh, 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 GoSim is a new event we are starting from last year. So we flew in a lot of uh, Rust experts to, uh, to talk at uh, this GoSim. Uh, we have a Rust track and also an AI track. So uh, this year it would be in May, early May in Netherlands. Uh, and uh, also RustConf is, uh, so we are managing the largest um, Rust community in China. So if you're interested, every year we would have a Rust China Conf. If you are interested, welcome to submit a talk. I guess that would be my uh, presentation. <laughs> Thank you.